Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell because I'm wearing my glasses, but if I'm wearing my glasses, you know that I'm doing something that is focused on going back to school. It is right around the corner. I know teachers don't want to hear that. Sometimes I don't want to hear it because I am enjoying the summer break. The last time I had this backpack, I pulled out something amazing, but it was amazing for a student. Today, this craft is going to be something amazing for a teacher. Okay, so let me show you this awesome goodness. I will pull out the thing that I pulled out the last time, which was um, the back to school board that I made for my daughter. And I don't know if you remember, but I will put a link to that video in, in the description. This was what we made the first time I did a back to school video. And I'll put that right there. And this time we made this, okay? I use one of those Dollar Tree mats. Um, it's actually called a Dollar Tree cutting board. And I made, let me turn it this way so you can see it, <laughs> a learning mat. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the materials that I use for this project, I use my Cricut Maker cutting machine. I use the engraving blade, uh, which is the one that says number 41. I used a little bit of masking tape. I don't have any painter's tape on hand and this worked perfectly fine. I used um, a pack, uh, one of the chopping mats. I purchased these from Dollar Tree. And I used my long 12 by 24 um, standard grip Cricut mat. Um, and the file, I created it myself um, and I'll show you how to use that. And the font that I use is called KG Primary that I downloaded from defont.com. Optional materials, you might want to purchase some, um, um, and you don't have to use this brand because these are magnetic, but um, you might want to purchase some, um, what are these called? I've got dry erase markers and um, an eraser, but you could also use an old sock or an old piece of um, cloth. Teachers are very creative and they come up with ways to, you know, um, improvise at, at the spur of the moment. So these are just optional, but these work very well on the mat. Okay, so I am in Cricut Design Space and the first thing that I will do is set up a template um, to use to create my learning mat. And remember, because you are creating this, you're not using a file, you have complete creative freedom. But I will just give you an example of how to set one up um, in a way that um, everything works and it came out pretty nice. So I'll show you my process. So the first thing I'll do is go to the shapes um, menu and I will grab a square I will unlock it and I will change the size of the square to um, 14 inches wide by 11 inches tall, okay? I will minimize the view on my screen a little bit right now. If you look at the bottom left, I'm hovering and it's on 100%, okay? I'm gonna change this to about 50% because I like to be able to see everything on my screen. The color of the learning mat is clear, but you know, clear is not really an option here. So I will just change the color to this, um, that's kind of ugly. Well, I don't like it. Um, this light blue, okay? And the next thing that I will do is, um, you know, you can, like I said, you can, you have complete creative freedom here, but the way that I will do it is, um, I will start to type in the alphabet. Now, if you are a kindergarten teacher or a first, maybe even a first grade teacher, and you know, you have students who are still learning how to write their names, you might add in a line for, you know, hello, my name is, and give space for them to write their name. I am not going to do that. I am going to get started right away with the alphabet. Um, the font that I found that works best for this is called KG Primary Dots Line. KG Primary Dots Line, and it will be listed in my description. The reason why I like this one is because it already has the lined dots, 
and all of the alphabet, when I start to type them in, you'll see that they are already all separated, okay? So I will get them typed in and show you how the spacing that I found that works best, okay? So I'm gonna just start typing capital letter, then a lowercase letter, then a space. Let me move this so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So right now you see that all I've typed so far is a capital A and a lowercase a, or you can call it uppercase A and lowercase a, depending on, you know, what you wanna call it. Okay, so mine is gonna be called KG, if I just type in KG. And I did get this font from um, defont.com, okay? So it's a free font, I did not purchase this font. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to B, I think I'm going to delete the H. I don't want the H. I'm going to just double clicking, trying to get my text box to come back up. Um, G is the last letter that I want to stop at. Okay. And what I have found is the size that works perfectly and looks really neat on the mat is if I change the width of this, I'm gonna unlock this, I'm gonna change the width to 13.726 and the height, I'm gonna change it to 1.477, 1 1.477, 1 okay. I'm gonna hit enter. Um, and I like the way that this looks, okay? So when I move it up on my mat and resize it, you know, just put it in the right place, it is, to me, it's just, it's the perfect size. So what I did is I duplicated this line, even though I'm gonna to need to change the letters. I'm gonna duplicate this, actually two more times, okay? And then just type in the letters that I need. And the reason why I did that is because I want all of these lines to be the exact same size, okay? So I can just delete these Move on to my next row and go, okay? So I'm going to go to my H, H, I, I. Okay, and while I'm typing, I can see, you know, my spacing. I can tell if it looks good. I can tell if I need to move anything. Okay, so I have H, double check yourself, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Okay, this looks really good. And now the sizing is off a little bit, but what do I need to do? Change it to that 13 point, look at it, because I wrote it down, 726. And I am going to unlock this, and I want this to be 1.477, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go to this one. And you know, like I said, keep double checking yourself because even though we are adults, <laughs> we make mistakes and it's been a long time since we really, you know, use the alphabet like that. Okay, H-I-J-K-L-M-N. So I'm gonna start with capital O, lowercase o. To double check that my you know my line is the right size it looks like it's you know it changed on its own I still want to go back and make sure I'm having the right size 13.726 and uh, 1.477 okay. so so far so good and I'm going to duplicate this line one more time even though this one is going to end up being shorter but I'll, I still want to do it that way. That's just what I wanted to do, okay? All right, the next thing that I did is I grabbed a line and you don't have to do yours this way. I'll go back again to saying that you have creative freedom, okay? I'm gonna move the line over here. And I know that I want this line to be able to go across this um, rectangle. 
So, and I know that, you know, if I just try to eyeball it and try to get it straight, I might not get it straight, okay? So the key to help you with that is first, you know, you want to stretch it out. And if I look here, I'm look at, look at where I'm hovering at the top panel where it says rotate, I can tell that it says 89.61. So I know that won't give me a straight line, but I know that if I have it at 90 degrees, that is a straight line, right? Okay, so that is where I want that to be. And I am going to duplicate that line because I want two of them. Okay, and I actually want this line to be the same width as everything else. So this one is should be 0.726. And this one should also be 13.726. And if you're wondering why I'm changing the height, it's because this line, remember, is rotated. So if it was, you know, facing in a different direction, I would be doing something different to it. All right, and now the next thing that I did is I grabbed some shapes because that's something that, you know, you learn in the primary grades. Okay, so the first shape that I'll grab is a circle and I'll just, you know, resize it to fit in between these two lines. Actually, let me attach these two lines. I'm gonna hold the first line and click on the first line, hold my shift key, click on the second line, and I'm going to attach those lines, okay? Because I want to, I want those lines to stay together and I want everything that I put in between those lines to fit perfectly. And because I already know the width of them, I want to have the same spacing that I had with these letters, okay? And the spacing that I had between the letters was 1.477, so 1.477. Let me make sure it's unlocked. And it was 13.726, okay? So I am going to click on the circle and resize it so that it fits in there. And I actually don't want the circle to touch those lines. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'll grab the next shape, um, which is a square. Okay. And um, same thing, just resize it so that it fits in here. And I just look for, you know, basic flat shapes. of these I actually want them a little bit bigger so I'm gonna click on those lines again and give myself a little bit more space because So now I am going to let me move these lines to make sure that they're not touching that Y and they're not none of these are touching so I want all of my shapes I'm going to select each shape I'm going to hold down my shift key and I am going to attach them so they stay together and um, then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'll go back to my text and I'm just going to type in, it's still on KG primary dots, I'm just going to type in, you know, my numbers. And what am I 
are going to do. I'm going to resize this. I'm going to unlock it up here and I'm gonna change the width to 13.726 by the height 1.4, 1 1.477, okay? And I like the way this looks. So I can take the whole thing, okay? I am going to hide my mat, and I can see that this, um, the circle looks like it's a little bit off. So um, well, let me detach these for one second. And move that down a little bit. Okay, so let me select all of these. And let me align them to the bottom. Okay, I like that, that better. All right, that is much, much better. Okay. And I also still want to make sure they are attached. Okay, so I the next thing I'll do is select the whole thing because now everything is attached the way that it should be. I am going to align it and I'm going to center it horizontally. This looks perfect to me. Okay, so the next thing that I'll do is I will hide this mat because that mat is just a template. I'm not actually cutting that mat at all. I will select the whole thing again and I will choose, my operation will be engraved, okay? So everything on my mat will be engraved and it, it is attached, okay? And the size of the whole thing is 13.726 by um, 10.533. And that is perfectly fine because the size of the mat is 11 by 14. So I'm still within, um, within range. Okay, so I will click make it. Okay, and when I click make it, it tells me you should get this message to at least one of your images is larger than 11.5, which is perfectly fine because you will need your 12 by 24 mat. I am going to use my green standard grip mat, the 12 by 24, the green mat. And um, you see right here where it goes, um, let me, hopefully you can see where I'm hovering at the top over my 11. I am going to move this over just a teeny tiny bit so that it's closer to the 11, okay? And there's a little bit of space at the bottom because I don't want to risk um, the design cutting off the mat, okay? And um, when I get my mat loaded, let me open these so I can make sure to describe that for you. You will feel that one side of it is kind of rough and the other side of it is smooth. When you put your design on your mat, you will be cutting or engraving on the smooth side of the mat. Okay, so I am going to need to mirror my design so that when I have it on my mat, I can see it from the side that looks kind of like frosted. So let me go ahead and click mirror. I'm gonna click okay here first, and then I'm going to click mirror. Okay, then I will click continue, okay. And the setting, the cut setting that works best for this project is the one that is says um, craft board. Okay, and right now I'm getting a message that my maker is offline, so I hope this doesn't give me a problem, but I already have this design saved, so I'm, I've learned my lesson just <laughs> trying to create and go, because it'll turn into hammer time if it you know doesn't go well okay it says base material set to crab board my pressure is on the default setting you will need your engraving tip i'm going to put my engraving tip in clamp b 
Now I've heard that you can do this with the, uh, you know, Cricut Explore Air 2 and there's a, you know, engraving tip that you can purchase if your machine is out of warranty. I will not get into that because my machine is not out of warranty and I would not recommend that to, to anyone. So I am going to get my mat loaded and I'm going to put my engraving tip. Let me show you what that one looks like. The engraving tip into um, clamp. Okay. It is the one that looks like this. All right. Okay, so notice I have put my engraving tip in clamp B. Let me just show you that one more time. It's the one that has the 41 on it. Um, just stick it right there in clamp B. Make sure it's you know, closed. I moved my star wheels all the way over. And I did just add tape to the corners just to be on the safe side um, so that it doesn't move. I'm using my long 12 by 24 standard grip map, mat and my cut setting is on craft board. I'm gonna go ahead and click the C. So it's finished cutting. I put this box under here just to keep it steady. It did, um, Engrave a little bit on the tape, but it's okay. I'm going to unload it and take it from the mat and share my final thoughts with you. Okay, this is the final pro product. This is how it turned out. I did just put a piece of um, black canvas behind it just so you could see the letters better. And you know, if I was a primary teacher and I was thinking of ways to use this, um, if you chose not to do it uh, with a name, you might have you know students practice by just tracing the letters in their name. So if I was going to you know trace the letters in my name, I would do you know, capital D, lowercase e, L, O. N D A. Okay, that's one way you could do it. You might tell students to, you know, trace the shapes in blue or trace it in their favorite color. These are just dry erase markers, so they just wipe off perfectly. Um, you might have them practicing numbers one to five, like you might say, now just trace your letters, your numbers one to five. Um, there are multiple ways to use this. Um, I do have this file now as an SVG. So if you are a member of my Facebook group, I, of course, I don't mind sharing this file with you, but it's easy enough to make it on your own. It's easy enough to personalize it just the way you want it. This um, eraser came in that chalkboard set um, that I shared in the Christmas in July weeks two and three files. So um, if you're wondering, like, where did I get this? Because it's just, so cute. Um, and like I said, these mats came from the Dollar Tree. Okay. okay, so hopefully you were able to follow along with my process um, and create something just as spectacular as this. This is a cheap and easy way to help your primary learners, you know, get started with their alphabet or their shapes, just the basic shapes or their numbers, or you could personalize this just the way you wanted it. Maybe you want a mat that's dedicated to just shapes or you want a mat that's dedicated to just letters or you want a mat that's dedicated to, you know, whatever you're learning at the moment. This is a fun, easy, cheap way to do it. Now, I know in the video, um, it looked like, you know, the Cricut machine was cutting super fast. That is not a Maker 3, that is a regular Cricut Maker. And it took about 40 minutes um, to cut, to engrave with this because of all of those little dots. But, um, you know, if you have some tape to get yours taped down and you move your star wheels all the way to the right, you shouldn't have a problem. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications so you don't miss a tutorial that I upload. I upload every single week. My schedule is um, 
it's pretty it's pretty set it's it's a tight schedule i keep mine set for tuesdays and fridays and i do keep a consistent schedule within the month of july i am doing christmas in july where i am sharing a new cricut um christmas craft with you something that you'll be able to use in the next 100 days or so depending on when you watch this video um but at any rate thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching bye